Welcome to Talk 30 to Me, a show where we talk about the perspective of 30-somethings on life, love, and the never-ending pursuit of fulfillment. My name is Anthony, but most people just call me Turg. And I'm Randy Z. Let's start the show. All right, here we are. Another episode, another day. How you been, Randy? Man, I'm good. How about you, bro? I'm all right. Well, I've been better, and I think you have too. <laughs> um, but that's a lot 30. going on. That's yeah, 30. That is 30. Man, uh, let's get into the show, man. Let's bring in our guest today. Sure, yeah, we do have another guest uh, joining us here, Mr. Curtis King. Hello, hello. Welcome to Talk 30 to me. Thank you for having me. Yes, thanks for coming on, man. Um, Man, Curtis, why don't you tell the people a little about yourself? Uh, Curtis King, I'm an artist and I'm also a producer. I am the living, breathing definition of do-it-yourself. Um, some people may know me as Baby Sinbad because of the flat top that I've done for many years. But um, <laughs> I need all to see of, a picture of that. Yeah, oh no, I, get, I got that right now. It's, right now, I have it oddly braided on the, just the top. So I'm trying new things. I can't. I'm, I'm just like you know. I mean, maybe I'll take that from Prince. I just can't stay with one look for too long. But um, yeah, I'm an artist producer. Um, I'm a teacher in terms of just uh, I love to love to give people value. I love to be in a position where uh, I pay everything that I've learned forward. So those are the things that are probably the most important about me. Yeah. And I was I was actually telling Turk, I was like, Curtis King is really like the Charlie Hustle of music. Like this dude, I actually first time I think I came across your stuff was when you were doing the paid dues Mm -hmm. campaign. And right. that, that daily campaign, which was crazy. I just I remember that. I was just like, wow, this dude's putting in, like, a lot of work. Yeah, I, mean, I, I wanted it. <laughs> yeah, it's committed. It was one of those things where, you know, you, you think about anything that you want bad enough. And uh, it's funny because my gym instructor, um, my trainer, he's told me, he said, uh, never forget what you're here for. Never forget your end goal. He said, I'm going to keep telling you that and putting it in front of your face because it's those moments where you, you feel yourself getting weak. Is where you start asking the question, what am I here for? Why am I doing this? And when you're reminded, if it's something that's passionate enough, I don't care if it's even something that's um, superficial. Like if you want to do this, people people laugh all the time. I was talking to somebody last night. People laugh all the time at Floyd Mayweather and, you know, they, they hate him and they hate because he's so, you know, uh, uh, you know. He's so about just his jewels and his money and showing off his cars. But I'm like, that's literally what t- what it took to drive him to be one of the greatest fighters yeah. of our time. And if that's what it took, I mean, who are you to judge? That that drove him to get to the gym every day. That yeah. drove him to want to learn how to dodge punches. And I, I feel like it's more than just that. But sometimes you need, I learned that from uh, Ty Lopez, you need superficial goals sometimes. Right. Because those are the things that at the heart of it, you have, I mean, we have, we all have our goals that are like, I want to do this for my family. I want to take care of my family. And that never goes anywhere. But what happens when a family member pisses you off in the midst of you going for it? Mm-hmm. And you're like, what am I, what am I doing this for then? Right. Yeah. And you know, so you have to have things that, you know, it's a balance. So, um, I mean, that's very important just to be realistic about what it is that you really want. Yeah. You know, it's funny. The one thing that you said, that your trainer said, he said that, you know, what are you here for? Or right. what, what, how did, how did he phrase he it? Said, he said, he said, he uh, said, I'm going to keep reminding you. He said, first of all, tell me, what are you here for? What do you, what is your goal mm-hmm. in terms of being at the gym? And I told him, I said, I wanted to, you know, lose weight. And at the same time, I wanted to just feel better. I wanted more energy throughout the day. And he said, okay, I'm going to keep reminding you that every time that you get to, you know, you have to do 15 reps, and you're on number 12, and you feel like not lifting that bar again because things are getting a little bit too difficult, I'm going to remind you why you're here. Because he said when you get to that 12th one, that's when you start asking the question, why am I doing this? Like, this is stupid. I want to Mm -hmm. be at home, you know, eating cheese puffs and watching uh, Wayne's (laughs) Brothers, which I very much enjoy. Um, But, you know, you remind it because, you know, obviously there's times where you don't feel good about how things are, you know, and um, that's something I was very aware of, especially deeper into my ni- my 90s, my 30s. Um, I'm not that old yet. I'm not a vampire. But, <laughs> yeah, deeper into my, you know, as I start to approach, as I started to approach my 30s, I started wondering, you know, what type of damage that I did on the tw- in my 20s on my body, you know, mm-hmm. not even just as health-wise, but even, like, my actual um, vocals, you know, because mm-hmm. I wanted to, 
I wanted to be able to be more melodic within my music. So I went to a voice teacher and I wanted to see if I damaged my vocal cords being a, a loud rapper throughout the 20s. And she was like, no, they're, they're not They're not damaged, you know. They've been used, but they're not damaged. <laughs> they got you some know? mileage on them. They got some mileage on them, you know, especially being in an underground hip-hop scene where most of the sound systems are terrible and you have to yell to be mm-hmm. heard on these terrible microphones. Um, but no, keep keeping keeping very close to you what the actual goals are. I think um, that really defines the, the why. Why are you doing whatever you're doing? And it maintains you through it. Mm. No, I I wanted to expand on that because it, it, when you said it, it, it processed completely differently in my head. And and one thing I've realized, uh, you know, I, I'd say in the probably last few years, um, is is knowing when I'm I'm the weakest is, oh, yeah. is when I'm like when I start getting sick. Yeah, that's when everything else starts to fall apart. Like right. my <laughs> my uh, that's so real in, insecurities start coming out. And yeah. I and I start questioning everything, like like what what am I what am I even doing here? Like everything it, like, and everybody, right? Yeah, and it's 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 completely un un. There's no reason why I should be thinking those things, but right. it's just it just gets the best of me. And when I'm you know physically sick and I'm not at my best mentally, I just start falling apart. Yeah, and that's, that's what it just that's a very real thing. It's a very real thing, and I don't think that it. I, don't, I think that you know um, the older you get, I don't think that gets easier necessarily. Because I mean, there's there's ob- obviously new obstacles as you get every year. As you were saying earlier, every year you you know you you get er- you get older, and then you find new things that you got to pay attention to. Right. You're, you're, yeah. Even me, I have to pay attention to my B12 intake because <laughs> you know I, my nerves real and, shit. and things like that. You <laughs> have to pay more attention, so yeah. it doesn't get any easier. But at the same time, you know you you, you do strength. Even though that doesn't get easier, you do strengthen up the most important muscle, which is your mind, and that really controls everything else within the rest of your body. You know, how you interpret pain. That's the only way that, you know, you can have somebody who has cancer and they, they give them less than a year to live, but, you know, and they've, they, like I said, it'll be a, a woman who they got to cut her hair off, you know, they, they've removed, you know, her breast and all these things happen, and she goes about her life, puts her wig on and goes about her life like, no, I'm going to live my life to the fullest. And she lives a full three or four more years after. Yeah. You know, a, your mind has a has a physical effect on the rest of your body. And, and I, I believe it releases, you know, things throughout your body, chemicals throughout your body that help you maintain. So Absolutely. I'm a firm yeah. believer in, in that the mind definitely controls a lot of what you are. Right. And your your physical attributes, your your personality reflects how you feel inside. So really... um, someone was talking to me the other day. I think it was one of my employees at work and he was telling me, I know when my son is ailing cause I could see it in his eyes mm. and, and we emote through our, through our bodies. All, our personality is basically portrayed through our, how we feel, right? Whether we're sick or whether we're not. So you were saying Randy that you can feel something coming on. You can kind of feel it and you want to protect yourself. Mm-hmm. That's one way to do it. What do you do to prevent it from happening, right? You take a stand that's, against it. Well, that's one thing I don't do is I don't prevent or don't do what I should be doing to prevent it. And that's where my biggest uh, disconnect is right now. There's there's w- things I could be doing, things I could change about my life. And it would absolutely make a world of difference. I just haven't made it a priority. And it's, it's but why? stupid. I, you know what I think? And, 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 and I don't know you. Like, I know you. I know you, but I don't know you as well to be all in your personal life. But <laughs> from the outside looking in, what I can probably say that a lot of these things start from is, you know, as human beings, our initial reaction is to hit a home run. Oh, yeah. We want to just get, if we have something happening to us health wise, we want to say, and I want to wait till I'm in the best position to do this and do this and this and want to hit a home run, you know, not realizing that. You know, I read, I didn't realize I was doing this in my life. And this is the reason why I was able to, you know, take care of the things that I wanted to take care of. But the compound effect and how real it is to start off with the very small changes, you know, um, mm. and, and start off with the things that are attainable to you and sustainable to you. Yeah. You know, starting off with the, even me, like my health was in terrible, right? I was getting sick every other week. I had all these different issues. And then um, I, I started seeing that a common problem between all the food i was eating was that it was pork mm. so i just i started going to the same place started going back to jack in the box and all these places and i said give me a breakfast jack with no ham it seems so minor and somebody looks at that and says that's not going to help you get better because it's still high cholesterol and the eggs and the grease 
I'm not worried about that. I'm doing whatever I can do so that this becomes a permanent life decision. Yeah. You know, even like now, um, water, you know, I know how, how important it is to drink water. Well, oh, I yeah. never, I never liked the taste of like Arrowhead. I grew up on Arrowhead water. No, I, I, and I, I hate Arrowhead. I hate Arrowhead with a passion. Arrowhead. Everyone right? hates Arrowhead, so, apparently. Right. Yeah. And that's why they have all those ads on my Instagram right now because they think that I'm <laughs> sabotaging them. <laughs> but that's another situation. But I mean, it, it, you, you, you have to, I, got, I, I drink alkaline water now and alkaline water, the alkaline water I'm drinking feels like the same satisfaction I get from some kind of juice or some kind of energy drink. And I'm drinking and I feel more and like I feel like this is what water is made for, right? Mm-hmm. So these little changes that don't seem like huge changes, I mean they're they're sense in their uh uh you know, small minor task in between, I think that's what ultimately contributes to the end goal. You know what I mean? That's the example they gave in the, in that book. It's a book I was reading called The Compound Effect, where he talks about if you tell most people if I gave you a penny that doubles in value for the next 30 days, or if I gave you $5 million right now, what would you take? And most people would be like, I'll take that $5 million. not realizing that the penny in a 31st day becomes $10 million because it doubles in value. But it's just small increments. Mm-hmm. And people don't want to do that work. You know what I mean? Most of you, I didn't want to do that work because we, I want to hit a home run. I want to, yeah. if I have migraines, okay, cool. Let me get the best pill you got so I can just <laughs> knock it out. Right. Not realizing that, you know, my high sodium intake, my lack of sleep, my, uh, you know, uh, just all these things were contributing to it. So I, th- I think it's because it's you're trying to hit a home run. I think, I think it's. Oh, no, bro. You, you, <laughs> one, one, I love the fact that you use a baseball reference. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. And you're right. I, I'm waiting for the perfect time to to capitalize. Yeah. And there's never going to be a perfect time. Man. Never. I've I've heard I've it's heard this over going. and over again. It's <laughs> never going to be a perfect time. You just have to to do it and just start. Small things, you know. Man. Ironically, I can do it with projects, you know, things like, you know, yeah. working on films or whatever. I've never done that in my life, but I started and I did it and I'm working on it. I think that comes back to the why. Why are you doing it? Cuz it right. means cuz of how much it means to you. Right. Or maybe you're doing it to forget. You're using it as a mess. That's possible too. You're using it as an avenue of of uh, an outlet rather than something that that you are putting yourself into now. So you're using it as a cover. It's turned into a therapy session really quick. Opinion. Hold on, can I? <laughs> it it okay. always does with us. How is it always reason. for me though? Why is this? This is the second episode in a but row no, where all of a sudden uh, it's your like... energy is, is your energy is you're you're, you're we're gravitating towards right. this is something that's important to you and we and obviously we're in a position where we 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 all care about you. And, and it's good energy that we want to see continue, you know? And I think that when you know true. somebody is so close to something, it's like imagine like somebody that, that you see doing well and you know they're so close to it and they could use your little bit of advice. Why not share that? You would want to share that. It I want somebody to share that with me. Oh, absolutely. Right? I need the somebody to do that for me. Fucking starts it right there yeah. and just takes off. And that's the thing. I'm the same exact way as you. I'm always waiting, 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 waiting. I need to get myself prepared for that yep. change in my life. Yep. I need to get myself ready for it. Well, what the fuck am I waiting for? Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. Just go and do it. This is why I started this whole grad school thing, putting myself through hell. Albeit, I did it all wrong. I've been waiting for health changes too. But you got the thing about it is you sometimes you have to do. I, I don't. I don't see anything wrong with doing it wrong. And what I mean by that is that. You know, one of my favorite books is Fell and Forward by John Maxwell. And he says that literally, you know, or, or not, he, he says it in a different way, but Seth Golden said it a whole other way where he was like, if I fail more than you, I succeed more than you. Right. You mm-hmm. can't debate that. In life, mm-hmm. experience is failure. Experience it is failure. It is all failure. Absolutely. And that's the thing. You look at someone with a lot of experience. Well, they fucked up a lot. In a their lot. Life. Oh, yeah. Oh, a lot. You know, but yeah. how, what has that translated to now? The sad part about it is. Now those people with all that experience look at someone like us, maybe, and in my my sphere of influence, this is how I feel. Mm-hmm. This is all personal projecting onto the onto the situation. They don't want us to gain that experience. So as a parent, I will be robbing my child of a future mm-hmm. if I rob them of the experience of failing. Because nothing teaches like the experience either. You you can tell somebody a million times. Do not touch that fire. You're going to burn yourself. It's hot. It's going to be the worst pain you ever had. Exactly. Until they feel that pain. Haven't you? It will not sit in their mind. Haven't you had that talk with your parents? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? Even, even when it came to like, there's certain things that, you know, like drugs they were so worried about. And I felt like if they were, if my parents were even more adamant about don't do drugs, it was just a very general statement. You do drugs, you out this house, nothing. We're yeah. not going to deal with you, period. Yeah. And it was like, okay, that's all I need. 
Yeah. Because I like my house and I like staying here. Right. And I don't, I don't, I don't want to leave here. Right. You know, um, and I never did. But I know the, 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 the kids that were my age who their parents were like, you ever do drugs? You ever become like your uncle? You ever become like this? Da, 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 da. You ever become an alcoholic? That's the first thing they do when they get to college. Yeah. They try everything, right? Oh, yeah. Fear mongering. Because yep. the, the mm. thing is, as soon as that person pisses pisses them off, the, the 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 one thing they can find as revenge is to rebel against everything they've ever been taught. And that's mm. kind of going back to what you said earlier. When you're trying to attain success, what if that one person that you're attaining it for... Yeah, completely man. pisses you off and sends you into a downward spiral and you lose sight of everything that's important to you. Yep. It's the same, same fucking thing. thing. Right same. now, I tell my kid not to do something. He's going to fucking do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it until, until it hurts him enough to stay in that memory bank. That's like, because I, I have my stepson. I know that he has to still experience these things. Mm -hmm. I tell him, I try to lead him, but I lead him in a way that's like, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Right? Because you're in, at, at the end of the day, when it's just you and your friends, you're going to have to make the decision. Right. But I know, I'm telling you right now, you mess around with these type of girls, they gonna give you. It's gonna give you heartbreak. Mm. And it's like, oh man, like what? What you mean? What you mean? I'm, I'm telling you. Listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. And he gonna find the one that's just, that's just his, uh, his Apollonia, and, he's gonna, <laughs> and, and he just gonna fall in love and have his heart broken. But you need to, I, I, as much as I want to protect him from it, he needs a, he needs a broken heart. Yeah. He needs to know what that feels like. I yeah. would pray that I give him the, the, the guidance. And the direction so that he doesn't go off the deep end when he has a heartbreak. Right. Oh yeah, at yeah. least to let that's him know that he has support. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Because right. that's one thing that I didn't have was, you know, even with my pops, like I, you know, he was in my life and definitely, you know, gave me some tutelage, but he's very strict. He's very, very strict, and um, I never felt like I had that support when things like that happen. Like if something happened where a girl broke my heart, remember the first time a girl, you know, uh, I, like I had my little girlfriend in, in middle school, in, in elementary. And I was like, oh, it's my little girlfriend. Like, you know, she said, yeah, she's going to be my girlfriend. He was like, so you too young. You ain't got no, you don't have no, he just basically just destroyed any feeling that I had that day. And I was just like, oh, so I can't come to you about these things. Okay, well, now I'm going to have to confide in my mom or confide in my, you know, my, my friends that are just my same age trying to learn. So as long as he has that confidence and knowing, I think you just got to be stung by it, man. You got to fail. People are so afraid of failing. They want to bat a thousand. And it's like, yeah. You're not going to bat a thousand. It's just yeah. not going to happen. Statistics Don't. never add up that way, right? Mm -hmm. And if you do, you won't feel good about what you have. You're going to feel like, okay, this is going to break apart at any time. Well, not only that, but you're going to take advantage of the situation to a point where you're going to end up failing and you're going to fall. What's the saying? The fall from the fall from the highest. The high. I get what you're trying to say. It's, the higher it's, the fall, the harder the fall, something uh, like that. Well, the higher the fall, the harder to get up. Essentially. The harder to get up, too. What, what do you think that desire is for, for people who... who like you said, they, maybe they've been protected their whole life. What do you think the desire is um, for them to fail or to fall? Or there to... is no desire. It's a fear. It's, it's a, fear. a fear of failing. Right, it's right. fear of failing because they don't they don't want to handle the repercussion. Right. Because I, I really feel like sometimes with, with, with folks who... It's almost like the kid who's been you know spoon-fed his whole life and he's never had to experience anything. And then the first thing he wants to do is go to the hood. Mm. All right? He's like, I want to know what this is about. You're going to get shot. Right, but he's excited about it. I've seen people. I've seen people get excited about like when I lived in Carson, um, which was like a city over from Compton. It wasn't as bad as as Compton, but it was. It, it got. It had its times. Yeah. And so people would come visit from out of state and be like, "Yo, could you take me to Compton?" Like, why? <laughs> why would I take? Why would I on purpose take you to Compton? I just want to be around. I want to see everything that I saw in the movies. Like, it's not like that. it's not like that. And when you get there, you're gonna see. Oh God. There are some things that are like the movies, but it's all the worst parts. Like this is actually in existence. I don't, yeah. I don't. When you breathe it, when you're in it, you don't want to be. And I think a lot of people, they they're so used to being protected, they want to know what the the, the 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 pain feels like. They want to be cut. Yeah, yeah. The wanna... <laughs> that's the thing. Naivety is the most powerful tool. It's the most powerful weapon. Oh, absolutely. Being naive about a situation, being I wouldn't even go as far as to say ignorant. Just being naive, underestimating uh -huh. the potential of a situation to, to, you know, unleash its power or whatever. You know, you look at someone wrong in the hood, you're going to get fucked up. Yep. Something's going to happen. Yeah. Growing up, I was kind of the same way. I was kind of naive. I was naive. Not kind of naive. I was very naive. And me and my friends would love going downtown, hanging out, going to the bad areas and mm. just fucking around. Because we thought it was cool. We thought, you know, it was the right thing to do. It felt right. Right. It felt right. One, it felt right. <laughs> yeah, it felt right. It, one, one thing goes wrong. 
that whole experience turns to shit. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what, that's the thing. You know, we're we're all talking about glorifying success and and trying to take it to that next level. We have to be mindful of how to get there. And now we're at that point in our lives where we are. We mm-hmm. don't take advantage of situations anymore. We let them guide us. Yeah. Uh, yes and no, because I feel like now I'm in a place where I actually try to embrace the the naive approach because there's when there's when there's too much knowledge of what could happen it prohibits you from going all the way in or making you know doing something that you would like well it's probably not a good idea to do this paralysis paralysis. yeah exactly robbing you from that potential learning experience well not even a learning experience but i mean take take uh I, I for, for the doc, I, I had an interview with a former White House advisor. And because it was uh, a document that was put out through the White House, I emailed the people that released the document. I mean, who the fuck thinks like, oh, I'm just going to email the White House. Let me see what happens. Right. And I got bounced around and I found somebody here in Arcadia that uh, wow. That I, could, I sat down and did an interview with that. He used to, it was on the uh, what the Clinton administration, I think. Right. He was an advisor and he's an expert on the millennial generation. I was like, who the fuck thinks to just email the White House? <laughs> That's not something you just, you know, I went all adas- adas- blah, blah, blah. What is it? Info at whitehouse.gov? Uh, no, actually. <laughs> hey, just sending an email, guys. <laughs> right. Right. No, I actually, it was actually through the Economic Advisors Department. Okay. So, I, you know, I agree with both of you because I understand both approaches. That you, you do need to have, you definitely use your experience as a compass, but don't let it be your shades. Yeah, like sure. like definitely use the naivete, like to to go into places. Like even me, like when I'm when I'm meeting artists that other people are nervous to meet. Sometimes there's, there's, there's hip hop legends in a room, mm-hmm. and I don't even. I've, and the thing is, like I've heard them by name, but I don't recognize them by face. And I'm in the room with them, and they're like, oh my god, that's so and so right next to you. And I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I'm gonna introduce myself. What are you doing? You can't do that. I'm just gonna say hello, like hey, what's up? You know, hey, how you doing? I'm going to talk to him like, okay, I'll give you an example. First time I met Ant from Atmosphere, right? So we're on the MERS tour and we're in Seattle. And uh, MERS is like, oh, I think Ant, you know, Ant's here tonight. And the whole tour, mind you, every time anybody brought up Atmosphere's name, the crowd went crazy like they were in the room. Wow. So like Prof was on the, a dude named Prof from Rhyme Stage was on the same tour. And he was like, um, I got a song with this guy named Ant. Anybody of Atmosphere fan? Ah! You would think they were in the room, right? <laughs> and it's on a MERS tour, right? So we're in Seattle, and we're finally meeting him towards the end of the tour, meeting Ant. And it's like everybody everybody on the tour that I'm with, like we was as a label, we, we were all, they were all nervous. And I looked at the situation, I was like, I don't know what clicked in my head. I'm, I'm going to make Ant laugh. I'm just going to make him laugh. I, was like, I don't know how, but I'm going to make him laugh. <laughs> I'm not going to make him listen to my music. I'm not going to make him follow me on any social network. I'm going to make him laugh. And so... He's asking us, you know, hey, I, I saw how's he real cool. He's like, how's the tour going on? And I'm like, everybody's like, oh, you know, just grinding, giving them like the cliche answers. Yeah, and yeah. I said, he said, he said, how's the tour going for you? I said, man, you know what I miss the most? He's like, what's that? I said, a clean pair of drawers. And he just starts busting up laughing. And it's like, <laughs> I mean, they looked at me like, what are you doing? This is it. I'm like, you, what are you, you're like an idiot. And I was like, this is how I feel. And he was like, I can feel that, young man. I definitely feel that. And the whole time I'm making them laugh, making them laugh. Two weeks later, I go to pay dues, and I hear a yell, "Yo, Curtis!" I turn around, and I'm like, "Is that Ant calling me my name?" <laughs> nah, that's not how it happens. But you, you need that naive. You need to be naive in that situation. I need mm-hmm. to be naive to the point where it's like, no, I'm, I'm not going to do what is the hip hop equivalent of professionalism right now. Right mm-hmm. now, I need to make an impact on this human being. Mm-hmm. I need him to understand that I'm comfortable being in the same room. I respect what he does. I know he's a legend. I know what you do. But I need you to respect me on a human level so that if we ever do come into kind of any kind of a music situation, it's a no-brainer. Oh, yeah. you're a cool-ass dude. Come on in here. Yeah. You know? But it made more sense to make that kind of an impact. I think people feel more comfortable, too, when you are being yourself. Oh, I feel comfortable. Especially, especially people meet, meet me for the first time. I've had people meet me in bathroom stalls. And, and oh, hold on. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 no, wait, 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 at the vibe, mind you, you know how small that bathroom is, right? Yeah. So I'm, I go in the stall because somebody's using the, uh, the, the the urine or whatever. I'm not paying no attention. Men don't make eye contact in the bathroom. That's just something that we don't do. <laughs> That's an un, unwritten rule. Unwritten rule, right? So I'm, you know, take care of my business. I'm getting ready to wash my hands. A, a lot of men go, you know, uh, I'm washing my hands. He's still at the urinal. And he, he's holding, you know, stuff. He looks at me. He's like, oh, no way. And I'm like, 
what's up, bro? Like, I'm still not making eye contact. And he's like, oh, man, Curtis, man, it's crazy, man. Like, I was listening to your music today, and he's holding his, his penis the whole time he's doing this. And I'm like, in my mind, that's all I can think of. Like, I got to leave. I have to leave. This is awkward. And like, and, 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 and I'm like, I appreciate it. Like, try not to be rude. I appreciate it, bro. You know, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I got to go host the show. Did he try like, to dap you as you walk out? Did he try to nah, get you that? I think he knew better than that. That might have been a fight in that little stall. You don't do that. No, but he, I was just like, that is so awkward. I have never, like, I don't care who walks in that bathroom. Not until that thing goes back into my pants where we have a conversation and we're out this room. Right. But, yeah, people just, you know, it, it's. There's, I think there's there's extremes to, to both approaches, to the to the naive approach and to the having too much experience because, you know, analysis paralysis is a real thing. When you have so much information, you don't do anything at all. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that where you are right now? That's In where terms, you are right now. It's a mix of oh, your yeah, past and your present. Yeah. yeah. It's to, trying to find the balance, right? Trying to find the balance and then realizing that the balance doesn't exist. But it makes it, it makes you who you are. It makes you who you are. That it, defines you. Your as a attainment of the balance is literally what you live for. Right. Because when you find a balance, you're going to be paranoid about both sides. I don't, think, I don't think the goal is to find a balance. I think the goal is to find out which part of the balance you need to use next. Mm. In this situation, do I need to have this seesaw lean more towards, towards being naive? Or does this need to lean towards my experience? If I have a kid, I had a kid one time because I had a lyric that said, um, basically, I, I, I interchanged the alphabet, you know, and I made a play on words between G and H or whatever. I forget exactly what I said. Um, and the kid tried to come to me and he was like, I was listening to your lyric and uh, I think technically it's wrong because of this, this and that. And I had, I sat there and I said, no, because the, 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 the alphabet, and I was breaking it down for him. And he was like, oh, OK, see, that's when my experience had to come in. And I had to, you know, school him in that situation. In a situation of meeting Ant, I did not need to be the know-it-all. The know-it-alls don't come back to the studio. <laughs> the know-it-alls don't get invited back to the VIP. The know-it-alls are keep him away from here because I don't like his energy. Right. right. And now I need to be naive. I need to be like the guy that's like, he's funny as hell. Bring him in here. What do you do, by the way? Oh, I'm an artist. I'm a producer named Curtis King. Okay, cool. Let me. But you just got to get in the room in a yeah. situation like that. No, I, I completely <laughs> I completely understand that. And I, I think for me right now, the, the goal or the, the approach I try to take where to keep my, you know, to not be so far on any direction is. Right. What's the worst that could happen? What is the worst thing? What's the worst that's going to happen in this situation? You know what I mean? Cuz at, at at the very core, okay, what's the worst that's going to happen? This is good. You know, okay, these are the outcomes. Okay, so why what? Right. That's not so bad. It's not the end of the world. Right. Uh, you, run yeah. with it. Go for you, it. You you, you want to know what my wake up call was? Um I get a, I get a lot in my dreams. Like I get very vivid, vivid, vivid dreams, right? I had a dream one night where um there was a table off into the distance, off like sitting off in this bright white light, and I couldn't see everybody that was sitting at the table. And I'm walking towards the table. Um, I could see it was a dinner table, and I sit down. I still couldn't make the faces out. As the light becomes less and less dim, I start realizing these are faces of people who have passed away, people oh. who have died, all people who have made an impact on my life, who have died. Right, my grandfather. I see my my uh, my auntie. I see a bunch of the people who have made impact on my life. And it was almost like an intervention that told me that there are dreams that we wish we could still accomplish that we never went after. Mm -hmm. What are you waiting on? What is your excuse? There are many a stories of potential in the graveyard right now. What are you doing? You have two feet, two eyes, two arms, and they're just going down the table and they're laying it out to me. And I woke up in tears. Like I woke up in tears because I didn't, I, I couldn't explain the experience, but it was like, it's so true. How many stories do you have of people who put shit off till tomorrow, who are just laying up in the grave right now? Not to be so morbid about it, but yeah. how many stories are there of people who were like, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a, when, when, when that check comes through, I'm going to get it in and never made it past that next day. So I really try to live every single day with um with purpose or at least a list it's easier said than done though that's what i said at least a list <laughs> even a list so, is easier said than done what? sometimes i sit down to make a list and i'm like fuck i've been here for two hours trying to make a list well see that's the thing about it that's why uh for our work week one of my favorite books um not everything in that book is my favorite but i, I, I was I, I was gonna say i was yeah, like i read that book and i was just like there's Arr. certain things i was like yeah i'm not gonna do that mm -hmm. i might do that but one of my favorite uh um you know i'm gonna paraphrase it was that you know, figure out the things that contribute most to your income and schedule them short uh, durations in terms of, uh, of of time to focus on them. So from that, 
I, I bent it and I said this week. So mind you, I've been doing music since 2002, 2003 as an artist and producer. Not once have I found balance. Mm-hmm. It's either been extreme of another. I have to either be a producer this week or I have to be an artist and I have to neglect one or the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not till this week in my life. I'm 31 years old now. Not till this week did I actually apply what I just had on my board for the last four or five weeks. And I said, you know what? One, I'm going to stop doing late night sessions. No more sessions after 10 p.m., which is like, how do you do that in hip hop? Yeah. No, no more sessions after 10 p.m. I'm laying out my own schedule. No more trips to L.A. Mm. There's no money making opportunities out there for me as an independent artist or a producer. If, if there is, I have to wait on it because you get paid quarterly. If you get placements or anything like right. that, you got to always wait on somebody. No more trips to L.A. Well, how are you going to make your industry mark? No, don't worry about that. We're going to focus on the people. I'm going to wake up at 5 o'clock. I'm going to have a miracle morning every single morning at 5 o'clock. I'm going to do 12 minutes of uh, 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 assisted meditation uh, with daily affirmations. The same exact one every single day. Get up in the morning. I'm going to drink a full glass of water to get my body hydrated inside. And I'm going to stay by this until I am sick in my stomach. When I, and the day that I don't feel like doing it, I won't do it. But I'll make the commitment that I have to do it the next day after that. Mm. So, like, I'm being real. I'm trying to be as real as I can with the way that I feel to maintain these things. Because, like you said, easier said than done. But I think that when you're when you're realistic with yourself and you know it's coming up. You know by that eighth uh, to, to tenth day, your body's going to start saying, oh, I don't feel like getting up today. I don't. That's when you start playing around with yourself. That's when you start putting your phone far enough away from you where you can hear the alarm, but you have to get your ass up to get to it. Right? So... There's ways to do it. It's just I, I feel like all the all the energy for excuses that I used to make, I can't I don't I can't afford to do that because my list is too long. And now I'm putting other people in position that rely upon me and I'm turning those people into my accountability partners without them even knowing it. Now I got people text messaging me like, yo, it's one o'clock. You didn't deliver me this. Da-da-da, da-da. Mm-hmm. I have all of these accountability partners now without them even knowing it. So that alone, I think, applies to my discipline. And it sounds crazy, but it's like I have to do this now because the days that I don't get up and do beats, I don't get paid. Yeah. And now there's a family, you know, my, my, my stepson, my, my fiance, my even my mom staying with me with my sister. Like there's people who are counting on me and I don't feel pressure because it's like, oh, all I have to do is just abide by these rules and do the thing that I love the most, which is music. Oh, cool. Well, let me just cut some things out. Where do you find the motivation? Where do you find the discipline to do that? I mean, you draw upon, obviously, the end game. Right. The end game is so hard for people to understand, so hard for you to attain, and it's so far off in the distance that you don't even know if you're going to get there. How do you maintain that level of discipline to where you can tell yourself that I'm going to get there no matter what it takes? Now, Uh mind you, I have my own approach that's very similar. Right. I haven't done it yet because I've been waiting. <laughs> right, right, right. I understand. So. I understand. You know what I had to do? You know what I had to do? Especially me because I'm such a ham when it comes to like social media. And I can be on Facebook and I can look at one video of Kanye going off and I end up watching, you know, two hours later, cats playing with yarn balls. Oh, bro. You know, with, it's, with, a black, it's a black hole, really. You know, with, 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 with pizza eyes. And it's like, well, how did this even happen? What is this in life right now? How did I do this? Why am I here? So I had to do things that. And I had to I had to disrupt my own patterns. I know my patterns. I know myself. I know when I get on Facebook, it's going to be a problem. Well, guess what? Every single time that I put my iPhone down and I have to unlock it, I have to see a screen, that background screen. If you look right now, my background screen, um, oh, it does, it, the, it does give me a reminder. But um, if you look at my screen when there's not a bunch of updates on it, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. You have a house that I can't afford. Oh. A house that I've walked into. It's a de- it's a demo house. Uh-huh. So I think the, the 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 secret for me is having a constant reminder of where I've been. I mean, every single day I need to find one of the pictures where I was the most brokest I could have ever been. I needed reminders at the times where I had to, you know, there was no more toilet paper, and all we had were the notebook papers I was writing my lyrics on. I need to have those reminders. I need to think about that. I need to think about the pain of, 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 not even just the pain, but just the, 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 the total disgust you have with having Del Taco for the, t- the tenth day in a row because it's the only thing in walking distance you don't have. Uber wasn't in, 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 in existence. You didn't have a car. The bus, the bus, you know, system was not that was wasn't 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 was really far away. And on top of that, you're in San Bernardino. Mm. 
Which is I need out that. the fucking fucking nowhere. There's nothing out there. Out of nowhere, there. and you got, and you can't be just roaming the streets because in that particular street, it was a street where a lot of people that had just came out of jail, they would just drop them off there. <laughs> Oh, and, sweet. and you would just see people walking <laughs> down the street like I'd be walking down the street and I'm being so naive I'm not knowing I'm getting banged on dude pulls up his shirt and he's showing me his tats and I'm like right back at you good morning <laughs> and I'm just walking down and then my buddy is like you know he just banged on you and I'm like I had no idea and this is why I stay where I'm at but to, to be in a one bedroom apartment that's not even your apartment you're basically in the living room and your whole existence is to this cubby hole of your laptop and making beats to now go from there and now i look up every single morning i have just I have it's, it's it's a three bedroom house that we're renting it's nothing huge it's nothing i'm not balling but at the same time i look at this room that i have and i look and say this is a room dedicated to nothing but music i look out my backyard my neighbors are distances away me reminding myself of that puts a foot in my ass every morning hmm. me seeing my phone and before i can get on social media and waste another t- two hours I, I look at that phone, I look at that house, and I'm like, that's not going to happen doing this shit right now. I have to be real with myself. And I, you know, it's crazy. You know how you, you're laying down, maybe you've been on the internet, and uh, uh, you're kind of half asleep, you're kind of awake. You ever hear a voice that just felt as clear as day? I've, I've had it where I've heard my name. Had, I've heard, had my I heard name. your name, yeah, right? I heard, yeah. my name. I heard the words as clear as day, and I don't know why I was worded this way, but it said, real men don't waste time. Mm. And it scared the shit out of me. I was like between it was like 2 a.m. in the morning and I was laying back and it, 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 and I'm just like I'm halfway between sleep and maybe it was a, a voice in my dream or whatever but I'm halfway asleep halfway on my phone halfway on my laptop TV's on in the background and it said real men don't waste time and I got up and I wrote it on the board because I have a whiteboard in, in the room so and that's something else too it's constantly being constantly having to see the things that you're not doing in front of you is oh that's that's the biggest ego crusher in the world. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Because I have a notebook and so does Randy. And it's so easy for me to put this shit in my bag. Yeah. And just forget oh. about it. <laughs> yeah. Say, hey, <laughs> it's over there. Problem. I don't have to deal with it this weekend. Yeah. Right. But to have all that in front of you, and I do this at work all the time, to look behind me and see all the shit that keeps piling up. Like you said, I have to find a way to dedicate time for that. I have to find a way to dedicate time to my personal life, too. We'll make but a shorter seems- list. You have to make, make a shorter, shorter list. list. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've absolutely learned that that is critical. So critical. Because if you pile on the shit and you don't get it done, that adds more discouragement. Mm-hmm. That derails your motivation. The whole process. Rather than adding a positive vibe to your day. So when I go and look at that notebook and I see all my, my, my marks and I pretty much mark like, you know, 80, 90% of it off. Feels but good. I had five or six. It feels great. It feels so good. Yeah. But then I have those days <laughs> where I have like two or three things and I don't get the shit. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. well, you know what? That's okay because I got other stuff done, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I can postpone this and I can reprioritize my day tomorrow based off of this list. Based upon that, yeah. Right? It, it, so it's yeah. all about finding that groove. It's all, all about finding the ebb and flow and finding about how you're going to do it. But it's also, you said it very clearly, but you didn't say it explicitly, holding yourself accountable. Oh, yeah. But you, and you know what? You, you can't even rely on yourself. 100% of the time to do that. I'm not so disciplined to where I'm like always on my own on my own on my own ass as crazy as that sounds. But <laughs> uh, I'm not as disciplined like that. I need things that are around me that are like slaps in the face. I need an old picture of myself hungry. Just like constant reminders. Constant See, but, reminders like what I need about, that stuff. What about the people that don't have that? How do they stay motivated? You How got do they... social media. You got pictures of your old self. You got pictures of yourself from a year ago that that should be an, enough. I would say there should have been enough of of a change between a year or at least enough of you of, of um just being irritated of who you've been for the last year to look back on pictures and be like man i remember this night at this party and i was not happy remember i remember this girl that i used to date and she did not make me happy mm. why why is it i was not happy yeah, that's also giving people a lot of credit to the to the point where not a whole lot of people take time out of their day to think about themselves this is true oh this is true that you hit it right on the head and i think that that goes back to what you were talking about. We were talking about a couple of days ago about being, um, you know, figuring out what are you happy? Mm, yeah. Are you happy? Are you, are you truly happy doing what you're doing? Not content, not okay. And it's crazy because I have to literally nail that into my, 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 uh, my stepson. My stepson is, is nine. I have to nail that into his head. I said, are you happy? I'm cool. I'm cool. No, no. Are you happy? No, no. I'm cool with this. Are you happy? Until you understand the definition of that word, you won't understand my question. Yeah. 
are you happy? And I think that that's a question that as a kid, if you can't answer that as a kid, of course, as an adult, you're just going to be okay with a lot of things in your life. You're going to be okay with the job you get, yeah. okay with the car you drive, okay with the wife you have, okay with the, 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 the apartment you're staying in, okay with all of these things that you're like, you know, you don't need much to be happy. You really don't. But it's, it, it's, it, it does require active energy and aggressive, aggressive action to get happy. Like you have to actively be going against it. It can't be something that's just like you, like you said. Oh, when I retire, and that's why like, I, I I can't live that life to where I'm working my butt off so that I can, you know, for this magical life where I'm just doing nothing in my in my my older years. I don't want that. I don't want to yeah. shrivel up. I want to I want to pass. I want to pass on in my 80s, 90s, being as active of like like a Jim Rohn. You know what I mean? I want to be as active as somebody that you know. I mean, I, I don't agree with his politics but as a, as an Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> you know what I mean like he's, yeah. he's still lifting weights still smiling and still trying to make people people smile no matter what his physical real situation is I want to be able to live that to the fullest and not wait to my to my 80s to live my the life of my dreams well there's there's two things I want to say to that first is, is going back to the idea of happiness and I right. think where so many people get caught up is the fact that well it was great for this week but now I'm not so happy so maybe I should dump this or make this change or and Right. Happiness isn't always going to be every day, but it's also a choice of sorts. Right. You know what I mean? And that's where it's, at what point is this choice you being content or you accepting what happiness is or, or really finding your joy or what makes you right. happy? And I just I, I wouldn't say I, I, I have it all figured out. I, right. I do struggle with it because it's just like, you know, I, I still work a job where I have a, a big impact on on students, especially like first gen students gotcha. and stuff like that. And I. I love it. I, I enjoy working with them and I enjoy helping them succeed. Right. But at the same time, not to say I'm a martyr, but when 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 do I take the advice I give these kids every day and apply it to myself? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's, that's a big one. You that's, gotta start thinking about whether or not they're taking you seriously if you live a hypocritical life. You can't let that bleed out. Yeah. Because their subconscious is picking up on that energy. I think people pick up on that energy. I think that's the reason why you get certain rappers in my genre that they, they they everything sounds good the production sounds great the the even how they're rapping sounds just like everybody else but they just don't they don't um resonate with people they don't have that energy they don't have that energy i think people pick up on it i think people feel like like i i hear what you're saying and what you're saying is gold but do you believe it right i think it's, it's a more important thing i absolutely <laughs> believe it and this yeah. is why because i also feel like in where we are now as a society or as a people in our generation we aren't defined by one particular thing right, right curtis right. king when i first met curtis king was a hip-hop artist right <laughs> now curtis king is uh like a budding mogul you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. you're I you're a teacher you. you're you're, right. you're doing all these other things that are more than just being an artist right and you know i, I love education I, f I have a passion for you know working with disadvantaged students right and i let them know straight up and down the things i do outside of work that also you know bring my passion and i you right. know it's you know with these kids are they're pre-med students and so they feel like they have to be the whole life com committed to medicine and science <laughs> and i was like what about the human experience is just that yeah and you know what i mean and that's where you know just to, i don't want you to feel like i'm just over here like you know living in line to my teeth to these kids because i'm not no, no, I, I, I don't believe that but i think that i think you're human like everybody else I oh think i have my times where i'm sitting in front of you because every week i do this this youtube video the, the artist marketing and the producer motivation videos and it's like i'm giving producers motivation sometimes i'm not motivated sometimes i have to deliver you but you know what you know what's crazy is that i read and um felling forward and i apply it to my life and what helps me when i'm in that that, that mindset is you know they gave a uh, john maxwell gave a story that somebody gave to him and he said um somebody was asking this person for advice they were saying what do i do when i'm at my most depressed and i'm sad i just had a breakup i'm in the house moping they said he said immediately run out your house Go to a train track and find somebody who needs help. Mm. So what do you what do you what are you talking about? What does that mean? That means that you're focusing too much damn attention on yourself. When you're moping and you're figuring about oh I don't feel I don't, I don't feel the, we usually feel that way because we're not doing for someone else. Wow. And I, and those moments that I have like where I'm feeling like I'm not motivated man I need to I'm not making beats I'm thinking about myself. Everybody yeah. is though. I mean look yeah. at the culture of social media around us. It is proliferating the mentality that you are important. 
to someone or something out there. Every single one of your thoughts, even I'm eating exactly. cereal, is, a, is that <laughs> has no relevance and no bearing. Someone out there will find it interesting. That is what people latch onto with social media because right. it feeds into their ego. Now, social media is essentially destroying happiness, in my opinion. Yeah. It is painting false pictures, and we talked about this last episode. Yeah. It's painting a false. It's allowing people rather to paint a false picture about their lives. Right. And they look back on it, and and you, I'm sure we fucking sit there and we look through our own pictures. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we're like, oh yeah, this was cool, this was cool. Yeah. It's inflating ourselves artificially to the point where we're giving ourselves a false sense of of self. We, we, there is no yeah. more self worth. Oh no! And I you, mean, we're destroying our dopamine. Not to cut you off, but I feel like we're destroying yeah, our absolutely. dopamine because yeah. we get instant gratification for everything. So, you know, um, you show me a girl that has has an Instagram account and she's got ten thousand likes. Every time a like comes to her, I've seen girls who you know beautiful and, they, and I look at I look at them. They stay glued to their phone. Mm. They're looking at all these likes piling up. Why? Because those are dopamine spikes. And I had yeah. this theory for the last four years when I learned really deep into dopamines, and and I felt like. The way that you find success in life is controlling the motivation of your dopamines. If 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 you if you're a billionaire, right? I'm sure at some point in time, the pure satisfaction of seeing one small amount double itself over and over and over, and putting yourself in more positions to where that same thing happens, I'm sure that spikes dopamines like crazy. That's how you became a billionaire, right? You didn't just become a thousandaire and be happy with that, right? That happened. That had to happen over and over and over. You're so obsessed about it. It made you such a savvy businessman because of your desire to see small numbers comp com compound themselves. So I think it's the same thing is that, you know, if you control your dopamine, the, the motivation of your dopamines, like if you're a sex addict, you're going to find a lot of people to have sex with. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you can control the motivation of your dopamines, I know it sounds something metaphysical, but it's, it's really not like it's really within your power. If you can control the things that just like literally turn you on if, if 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 it's you know if it's money if it's whatever it is you will find the success in that now there's an, an, an example i give sometimes people have controversy over it, but it's the same desire that a crackhead has when they're trying to get the crack and they come to a dealer with a with a new car or not a new car but they come with a car they didn't have right. why is it that that crackhead doesn't have the same motivation to get the car for themselves because they're driven by the crack the crack controls them so much I'll go find you a car. I'll go find you a gun. I'll go find you a, um, you know, a, uh, a TV. How do you have access to all this? And you're still out here in the streets. So I think it's the same thing when it comes to our desires. And now social media, people are getting their dopamine fix on lunch breaks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, You know, I think going go back to this idea of like happiness and with mm -hmm. the dopamine and then the success, like it's it's all correlated and it's. You have to understand what your driving factor is. One of my favorite classes in undergrad, the only thing I ever really remember is is social psychology. Mm. And your internal motivations, that's something you have to figure out what those are, what your driving factors are. Absolutely. And without knowing that, why are you driven to make music? Why are you driven to work in this field? Why are you driven to do these particular things? Whether it be right. hobby, career, whatever the case is. Understanding those is, is you know key to understanding what drives you and ideally what brings happiness to you but going back going back all the way to it like just becoming successful just having a billion dollars is not going to make you happy mm -hmm. you know what i mean and you've and you've touched on this before and yeah, absolutely. I, it's it's this idea it, you're you're on a constant treadmill just chasing this carrot and you don't even know why at a certain point yeah, yeah i think yeah. what separates the billionaires from those people that are on the treadmill is the fact that they do know and I live by this, I was telling uh, my wife the other day, I live by this saying, and I don't remember who told me or where I saw it or who, who I was talking to when, when I originally came across it, but leaders and true successful people, right, truly successful people rather, they do not put together a plan. They do not ask why, they just do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just Massive go out there of action. and yeah. they do. And I've been trying to sh reshape my whole mentality based off of that because it's true. Yeah. If you don't do well, how the fuck are you going to get there? How are you going to attain what you're trying to get? It's always good to have a constant reminder of what you're trying to go for, yeah. right? And keep changing it based on your level of, of success. So mm -hmm. as you graduate to the next level, you have to elevate your expectations. Yep. 
and they're only going to get more um, they're only going to get more demanding those expectations are only going to get more demanding you're going to be driving yourself to do better but you have to keep reminding yourself that one you are grounded and two you will achieve success it's not a matter of when it's a matter of how long will it take and that's all based on your personal motivation, on your drive and your commitment to yourself Absolutely. and commitment to those around you that you're trying to lift up by way of your success. And everyone's trying to do that. Yeah, I'm trying to do it. You're trying to do it. He's definitely trying to do it. And, and that's what we live by. We live by a set of morals that guides our lives, that guides our direction, and that keeps us focused. But drawing on that focus and harnessing all that energy is the hardest most painstaking thing you could possibly try to do because it is not easy because if it was easy we'd all be fucking successful yeah. well you, you know you know what it is too and and you, i think you hit it right on the head is that we are so wrapped up in what our actual our actual goal is and what we want to get accomplished and the things that we want and i'm no different the last i say before this year i was so concerned about you know delivering on all the promises I made to my mom in, in getting her the house of her dreams and making sure my sister can have a business. I was worried about just them and myself, you know, and we don't look at that as selfish because we're like, well, we're involving other people. It's not just yeah. me. It is selfish because what it causes you to do are things that only they would understand. You're not really being a service of the people. And, um, I tell you, it, it, there's a last, few months since this year started like my life made a completely different change when i took it off of me when i took the focus off of me and all the things that i needed the beautiful thing that happened was the more and i always had this weird relationship with the word value i can't stop saying it now because I, I fully I feel like i feel like i understand it finally but i always thought value meant money it was always associated with like the value meal at mcdonald's it's always associated with things that were just like you know it's just it's money amount right and then I, you know, I read up on it and I read this book called The Go-Giver and that changed my whole perspective on it. And I started thinking about it. I was like, an example of value, and I give you people an example in the value, the way I interpret it. If I got rent due, okay, and say, for instance, rent is $700, right? I don't know where I'm living at if I'm $700, but it's $700, right? And um, Somewhere not nice. I somewhere think. not nice, yeah, yeah. But imagine <laughs> if it is $700. And then I find these Griffies that I've wanted since I was a 12-year-old. These, these King Griffey Jr. Nikes. I've wanted since I was 12 years old. And somebody's selling them for six fifty. But rent is due. The and this is a situation that actually happened because it, my rent wasn't 700 It was like a, it's a thousand or something. But I was like, I cannot take this chunk of money off. But the fact that I had the power to sit here and debate that, mm. the value of those Griffies to me at that point in time, they're just shoes. They're no different from any other shoes. I'm not going to let me run wouldn't. faster. Shoes you probably wouldn't wear anyway. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, I, mean, I, mean I, I do wear them, but, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. but, but, but at the same time, like, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. It's, it's something that you're just going to be another liability. And I understood value then. So then I'll give an example. When I first started offering, you know, my, my just free consultation, just anybody who wanted any kind of help within the industry and they saw something I did as success, um, Hit me up. So a dude hits me up from um, from the OC, and he's like, man, I got some questions, man, but I want to make sure that you're going to honestly answer them. So we'll just ask him away, and let's see. And he answers them. He asks me questions. He's like, yeah, so I bought uh, $10,000 of worth of equipment, and, you know, I'm trying to make beats. And he's like, and he's like, you know, what do you use? And I'm like, yeah, I don't even use a, a percentage of that. I said, my equipment together probably costs 700 800 bucks. He's like, get out of here. He's like, what, what? He said, can you make reggae beats? I said, yes. Can you make hip-hop beats? He said, yes. He said, oh, man, I, you don't understand how much money you saved me. He said, I could take all this stuff back and get the stuff that you got. And I said, yeah, and that's not a problem, man. And I said, you have a nice day. He was like, man, I feel so wrapped up by you giving me this information. Like, can I give you something? I was like, I'm good, though. Like, appreciate it. He was like, do you need your bathroom remodeled? I'm like, sure. <laughs> yes. I started thinking about it. As a like, matter of fact. I was like, no, we're renting, so I can't really do that. And he was like, oh, man. I got firearms if you need firearms. I was like, I've never met this man in my life. He's offering me firearms and like bulletproof vests, right? But Where were you? I was on, on Facebook. Oh, this was on Facebook. This was on Facebook. Oh. I, I probably should explain that. This is wow. on Facebook. Guy hit me up on Facebook randomly. And I always tell this story because I, to me, that's another definition. That's like a slap in the face of what value is. To him, the information I gave him saved him over 9000 something dollars. Mm. And because nobody was willing to give it to him, and I gave it to him like very clear and very easily what it is. 
that was to him that was equivalent value of getting my bathroom remodeled that was equivalent value of me getting illegal firearms from this guy <laughs> that i've never met in my life yeah i guess value is essentially relative to the person i it's mean what, and it's not always money so, so, so that being said well yeah. there's certain things that we offer that we have no idea is is somebody's world somebody in north dakota right now wants to learn how to make dj mustard beats guess what nobody in his in his neighborhood makes dj mustard beats probably nobody in his neighborhood even has fl studio but if he gets on youtube right now and he goes see he sees a tutorial of a guy making a dj mustard type beat guess what he's in tune that guy to him right now is producer god i'm tuning into everything he says when that and, and as soon as he learns stuff from him, he tries to make a dj mustard type beat right he's making a beat he's making a beat and then he's like oh it's not coming out the way that i wanted to how can i get closer well guess what that same producer is offering drum kits oh for 20 bucks here here's my money right how many different opportunities do you have now? And one of the laws of, uh, of giving is the law of reciprocation from that book, The Go-Giver, is that you have to put yourself in a position to offer things that people can, you know, help you along the way. But you have to give them opportunities like I was giving advice to producers, not real, not selling them my, my drum kit or my having, having a call to action. I was just doing it from the goodness of my heart. And I wasn't realizing the law of reciprocation says if a producer comes to me and says, I need my drum, how do you how do I get my drums to sound like yours? If I tell him, oh, just use this program, use this program, and use this program. Oh, man, thanks. Why would I not offer him my drum kit that's exclusively from my own sounds? But it didn't click because I was like, I don't want to be silly. I'm just trying to help people. Mm -hmm. But the law of reciprocation says you have to you have to do that. This is how everything goes. You know, that's how the cycle goes. That's how you, you know, you get what you give. Yeah, in the here and now, yeah. But I think we could completely break that mentality because that mentality is more... I guess, for lack of a better term, capitalistic. It is more of a hey, how can I how can I gain off of someone else's? Well, yeah, well, no, it, I, I, I'll skip. I, I'll, I'll 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 say this to that because I understand what you're saying because that's what I felt exactly. What you're saying is exactly how I felt. The thing that makes it not capitalistic is the fact that is it is actual value. And this is the most. If he if somebody wants my drums, what is better? Of a what is better to have for him for me to give him products that send him on a wild goose chase that help that he has to go learn it he has to figure out exactly what i do and he'll never know exactly what i do unless i sit there with him or what's more value for him to actually have the drums right there and the thing is i'm not telling him he needs these drums to make it sound like that i'm offering it to him because he wants to sound like that huh because he wants he wants to, to sound, sound like, like that, that. so it, it's actually in that situation where i'm offering value in that and it's not me you know coming up in a financial game that's why it felt so nasty to me at first because i was like god this feels salesy but as i read the law of reciprocation it's like no this is the way that you know they, they all, people always say you know karma's gonna come take care of you if you take care of people it'll come back and come to you well you have to allow opportunity for karma to flow back to your your, your situation you have to allow it if you're constantly telling people no who are trying to help you it's actually a sin mm -hmm. to go to go about things that way because you're 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 not allowing your blessings to flow. That's how you get people who, in their seventies, eighties, they've given everything and then they become bitter. Maybe that is really the definition of success. Then it's how much you give back. It's how much you give out that will eventually come back to you at a point in time where you need it. If you're open to it. If you're open to it. If you if you allow it to come. The other thing about it is that there's a lot of people out here who are givers, 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 and they won't allow you to do anything for them. Is it an ego thing? Pride? I, I think it is a pride and an ego thing. I think some people are at the goodness of their heart, but at the same time, even those people who do it at the goodness of their heart, you know, they have needs too. And they have things that they have people who rely upon them. And for them not to accept these things, then it becomes an ego thing. Then it becomes you're not just affecting your life you're affecting other people around you because everyone around you feels like you're better than them and you're not going to take what they have to offer but you are bigger than them in giving them something that they needed at the time to help them it's kind of like taking money from it's like taking money from a neighbor and then you try in the neighbors in a hard spot and you're like here let me help you out and he's like no i don't need it i'm good right. but i know he's in a hard spot he just doesn't want to accept it. It's, it's kind of like an insult. Same thing. And the thing is, even even people who say I'll do something for you for, you for free, I no longer this year I've, I've accepted. I will no longer accept anything for free. We have to have some kind of exchange of energy. Mm. If it's not bartering, if it's not actual money, we have to exchange some kind of energy so that nobody feels like they're owed. Mm. If anything, I'd rather be the person in a position where I give you more, but I did it voluntarily. Yeah. There's no such thing as fifty fifty. I don't believe in fifty fifty because no matter what, if I give you a dollar and you give me a dollar. I'm going to feel like the dollar is more to me if I'm at the gas station. I don't have any money on me and I'm to my last on my gas. 
that dollar means a lot more to me than it means to you if it's like i don't really need the dollar like you know but i don't believe in a 50 50 i don't think that exists i don't think nobody can be a proper measurement of a 50 50 unless they're on the outside looking in but even then you don't know what that means to the other person so that being said i'd rather be the person that gives more in that situation but you 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 have to you have to put yourself in a position to accept these things and a lot of people are not me i was the main way i i even mm. though i was the poorest mm. you know the reason why i stayed the poorest is because i i would not say yes i'm i'm in that exact place um well it's funny you say that because one of the things i've embraced this year or mm. the, over the last uh since turning 30 is just say yes just say yes, just say yes. but <laughs> except accepting gifts accepting anything has always been very difficult for me right and it's it's been one of the issues that i've had actually in relationships ironically you know even just receiving a gift from a girlfriend or just like just something like oh she got this, you know she yeah. saw something thought of me picked it up I was like oh thank you thank you we're very similar in that yeah, yeah and i'm just like <laughs> like i just feel i feel but i have no problem like i see something i buy it and i was like oh i, I saw something. i thought you know, thought you could use it yeah you know what i mean that's yeah. that's that's nothing for me but mm -hmm. to get it back i'm just like all right now i owe you now i gotta go get yeah, yeah, yeah. i was like okay th yeah. thank you but that's the thing you have to refrain from thinking that way but go on I, i'm sure you had more to say to that i no i mean that was kind of the, the issue like i mm -hmm. i just can i can see that in myself as as I, i'm similar in this I, I i consult for people i help people i try to right. give you know I, I i never coined it as you know creating value because i just never thought of it that way right i just enjoy helping people and it's something that a friend of mine um uh said to me years ago when we were in our early 20s uh i think he made like his first million at 21 and he's like right. okay well now now it's just about giving back to the you know to our community and i was like right. oh well i'm uh <laughs> i'm not there yet yeah, but yeah. he said his whole thing is just help people sincerely and i've just yeah. i've i've held on to that so much for like the last like 10 years you, you want to know when my life changed financially and and i and i haven't looked back even at times that things got bad the moment i got to my last dollar and i was able to ask what can i give that is the hardest thing in the world for anybody who is broke, right? I had one time where I looked up and, you know, I had found, I had found success within the last few years in my production business at, in terms of leasing my production. So to find a success, we moved into a better situation. We were living in San Bernardino. We moved to Rialto, to a house. Everything's looking better. I finally got a car. All these things were happening. And I started to run into a, a sales drought. And I was trying to understand what was going on. And I remember looking at looking at my PayPal and it was like negative 300. Ooh. And I was like, I haven't seen this since like I couldn't like I was just I, since I was dead, dead broke. And I'm looking around the house and I was like, I'm too smart to be this broke. I said, what is wrong with me? And then that moment I, 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 I thought to myself, I said, so who can I give to? That's got to be the answer. What is the hardest thing for me to do right now? Give. Mm -hmm. What are most people are not going to do in that situation? Give. give. And I wouldn't. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I, I would so, feel but, selfish about it. But, yeah, but at the same time, you know what's crazy? The moment that I said that, that day that I had that, um, and I had that epiphany, and I said, "Okay, what can I give?" I don't know if I jumped on Twitter. I did something where I gave somebody some kind of value, and I actively knew I was giving them value because they asked me a question. Might have been an email. Not even five minutes later, I get a transaction for a hundred bucks. Mm then they get an email about an exclusive exclusive purchase. That's when I look up in the sky and it's like, I don't I don't care who you believe in or what, what force, but I looked and I said, I hear you, God. I understand. I, it's, it's clear as day to me now. I don't have to even debate this. This is not coincidence. I don't have to hear anybody, any skeptics. Skeptic, I know what this is. Because that was the hardest thing for me to do at my lowest state was to take myself out of the equation and think about what can I help with. And the moment that I actually put it into action, I saw immediately that change. And from here on out, I don't care what my bank account says. Like, I'm giving. Mm. I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving. You know what happens? The more you give, the more people, you come to people's minds. Hey, you working on an album? Man, hit up Curtis. He may not have all the beats that you need, but like, he's, he's a cool dude. He does great business. There's times where I'm in situations, I'm like, how do I get in this room with this producer that's, he has Grammys. I don't have Grammys. This guy, has, he has Grammys. This guy over here has, you know, uh, placements with the elites. How did I get in this room? And then uh, the, the only thing that I can think about is, one, I'm not difficult to deal with, and two, I have no problem giving value and being on time about things. All the things that the 97% of people who are not doing what you guys are doing right now are not willing to do. It's a 97 percentile that I never attain their dreams. They will never you know, be able to say they own a house, will never do anything with their life because they're always making excuses about why the world is against them and why they can't do certain things. 
Yeah, it's a constant paranoia. It's a constant fear of not being able to not being able to have what it takes to make it and stifling yourself. And you're really I, I mean, I'll give you this. You have a much greater sense of self. You you've had time to think about this. You've been at that point where you've had no choice but to think about it. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. That really <laughs> San Bernardino, I mean, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like that kind of drove you. That acted as your motivation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now all that's behind you and you found an answer how to sustain it. Yeah. I mean it hasn't it hasn't it's been by terrible trial and error, but I mean it happened because of that. Well, You're that's right. what we yeah. were talking about before, experience. Yeah. How do you get to where you need to be? And this might not apply to everybody. I mean, you guys might be out there listening and saying, oh, shit, this is some deep shit. And it is. It really is some really <laughs> <Right>. introspective stuff. <laughs> you but would not be lying about it. <laughs> there is not one way, a cookie-cutter way, to attain this kind, of, this, this kind of thinking. You have to, and Curtis, you alluded to this, you have to open yourself up to all the different possibilities. Yep. You have to make yourself available because if you're not available, you're not going to get as much from life as you could possibly get. And that's the sad part about it. We close ourselves off. We put up masks. We mm -hmm. put up barriers. We stop ourselves from giving because we're afraid we're not going to get back in return. It's not about getting instant gratification. And that's what we are. That's we're a culture problem. of instant gratification. If it's not coming to me right now... How can I give? I can't afford to give. No, you can't afford not to give. You can always afford to give. You, can aff you can't afford not to give. Right. Whatever you want in this life. Like, you know what's crazy is that, you know, that's why I, I appreciate the podcast format more so than any internet radio that I could ever do. Like, I appreciate this platform more than any other platform because this platform is literally what drove me away from the mentality of the, the mindset of a, of a rapper. Right. So uh, a buddy of mine, Art Bars, put me on to this podcast, uh, uh, you know, John Lee Dumas, Entrepreneur on Fire. And I started listening to it every single morning when I got up in the morning and every single morning he has the same format. He talks to entrepreneurs and he asks them, what was your lowest point? Every time he asks that question, I have to think about my lowest point. Mm -hmm. Every time he asks him, what was your high point? What was your, you know, what are your streams of income? He really just digs into them and asks the same questions. Every single day, I felt like I sat with another entrepreneur. And I realize that they're not doing things that are so like unattainable and things that are not, you know, doable. I thought that whole world was separated from what I could do. And I'm listening to a lady who started a salt business because her and like she was a stay at home mom and she just happened to make this custom salt. Right. She just made it for her kids and her family enjoyed it. Then a friend of hers had I don't know what she had, but she put salt in it. And she was like, what salt is this? And she lied and said she got it from another state over. Come to find out that the woman, years later, after she figures out her skill and even her ability to be an entrepreneur is a multimillionaire. Hmm. And I'm like, how many struggle rappers are there right now that are sitting inside their room and they're like, well, I'm not on BET, so I'm not successful. I'm not on MTV, so I'm not successful. My song's not on the radio, so I'm not successful. Well, I'm not Tech 9, so I'm not successful. And it's like, well, what are you defining success by? It's such a broad viewpoint of what you're saying is that if you start defining success about where you're at right now, okay, what brings me happiness? What keeps my excitement up? Doing this. Okay, who am I speaking to? What audience am I speaking to? Okay, I'm a goth trap rapper who speaks to, you know, an audience that, wow. you know, is 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 in high school right now and it feels like they're misunderstood, but they love trap music and they dress in goth clothing. Guess what? That's my audience now. Those exist? But that's I'm what I'm sure saying it does. is that, okay, that yeah. nowadays, Damn. especially with the access we have on, on the internet, I just made that up, by the way, but I'm just saying, like, I know somewhere some, somewhere thing, yeah. right now, somebody's making trap beats with black nails, and they're like, this is how I want to express myself, because I come up in a hip-hop culture, I love trap, but also I love the, the, the symbolism of goth. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, if you know that's who you are, just be that, niche it down. When I started listening to those podcasts, I started realizing that success was a lot more attainable than I thought it was, because... I, I saw a clear vision of what exactly it was when I started niching down and realizing that you don't need a thousand people, a million, you don't need a million people. You just need a thousand of the strongest people that can pay, you know, top dollar for what you're doing. You need a strong base that believes solely that you're giving them value. And if you can give them value on a regular basis, life will be so much so much more gratifying, so much more fulfilling than just trying to go after your own goals. It becomes you know, our goals in life becomes just so much better. Man. 
That's all you got to say to that? Man. <laughs> man. Oh, I, I lost man. My, my whole train of thought. No, no. I mean, this is... I, I did. I really didn't expect to have this conversation today at all. Yeah. Like, just just fuck our, our, our show notes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. My bad, my bad. No, 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 it's, 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 it's like beautiful. Like, it's beautiful. Ours, yeah. uh, man, we had... This, this, this conversation was great, Curtis. Thank you so much for being on the show. Really, really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me, honestly. I, I really enjoyed this. I'm glad. I'm so happy. Can you tell the people where they can find you? Um, Blackplanet.com. I'm just playing. <laughs> CurtisKing.com. CurtisKingBeast.com. Um, you know, just Google. You Twitter, all of those things. Hit me up. I, I try to stay pretty active. Uh, Snapchat is at Curtis King. No weird spelling, just two S's. I guess that is weird, but yeah, Curtis King. Yeah. Um, yeah. Curtis King is two, two S's like dessert. Rest in peace to press. Rest in And you can find me at I am Randy Z on Twitter. And you can find me at the underscore ruined on Twitter. And I think that's where we're going to leave it for today. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talk 30 to Me. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check us out at talk32me.com. Remember to leave us your comments. Be sure to rate us. And please hit that subscribe button to let us know that you care. For Talk 30 to Me, I'm Turg. And I'm Randy Z. Peace. Peace.